So now the grand finale of today's lecture. Let's look over here and really say, maybe without digging too deep, <laughs> did I use the word cosine a lot and the word length a lot to do this thing? All I kept saying is dot product, dot product, dot product, dot product. Maybe if I misspoke, I said in a product, in a product, in a product, right? That's all that's needed. Yes, sines and, co excuse me, lengths and cosines were there ultimately because when we said E1 dot E1 and we went here, that's when we remembered what E1 dot E1 means to us and said it's length of E1 times length of E1 times the cosine between E1 and E1. So we kind of did, but only at the very last moment. This whole discussion didn't care what the definition of the dot product really is. It didn't care what the definition, that's very important. I could have defined it with a seven here or in some other crooked way, and I could still have this discussion, almost unchanged. Okay. The only thing that mattered is two and a half. There are two and a half things that really mattered. What really mattered is commutativity. You guys agree? Because when we write v1.ei, we're not even thinking whether we write v1.ei or ei.v1. We don't care. It's commutative. And the distributive property, or else we won't be able to do this. In fact, we have a little bit of a doubt as to whether or not we can. But the answer is yes, we can. So distributivity. So what if I defined some other operation that was commutative and distributive. Something for polynomials. Suppose I define some operation that takes two polynomials and returns a number. Takes another two polynomials, returns a number, right? That's what a scalar product, that's how it works. Takes two vectors, returns a number. So what if I, thinking, I'm already beginning to think, hey, I want to carry this over to polynomials. This is so powerful, this is such a powerful way of thinking especially for a computer scientist or an engineer that, and a math major, we're all engineers. Math majors are engineers just in math, right? You have to build things in math, right? It's very attractive that you do everything via a single operation. It's very attractive that all you have to do is define one operation. Right? There are so many subjects like differential geometry, I'll bleep that out, that suffer from what's called an endless perfusion of new operators and new concepts and new things and so forth. And here you only need one. It's superbly attractive. So now I want to carry it over to other spaces. I want to do the same thing for polynomials and decompose polynomials this way. And in Rn. And then if I have something like this, I can define length. And then if I find the property like this, sort of, for polynomials, then now I have lengths between polynomials. And I have length, I don't have it anymore in the board, for Rn. And it seems like all that I need is commutativity and distributivity. And there's one other little thing that we need. And that little thing is that, you see we're dividing here by something dotted with itself? We have to make sure it's not zero. Because if we define something in such a way that, oops, x squared minus one dotted with itself is zero, then this would break down. You guys see that? So that's another thing we have to throw in for this to work, that something dotted with itself is not zero. And if you think about it, once you, you have to pick a side, it has to always be positive. Something dotted with itself, that's the only, not something dotted with something else, which can be anything you want, but something dotted with itself cannot be zero. And once you say that, you have to pick a side. You have to say that it's either positive or negative. Because if it's positive somewhere and negative somewhere, it's got to be zero somewhere in between by continuity. You guys agree with me? Yeah, so you've got to say positive. Because then you can also define length, right? Length has a square root in it. This had better be positive. So you throw that in. So you say, all I want is an operation that has three properties. It's commutative, 
distributive. And this last one that's called, uh, that requires that something dotted with itself is not zero, and that only applies to non-zero vectors themselves. Right? It's only when you dot a non-zero vector with itself. Small caveat, but important. This property is called positive definiteness. So it has to be commutative for obvious reasons or else it's a mess, distributive or else you can't do this, and positive definite or else you can't do this, and this is shaky also, dividing by this thing. So as long as you have an operation that satisfies these three properties, you can call it a dot product if you want. I call it an inner product. That's how you generalize lengths to other spaces. You don't carry over length. You carry over in a product because an inner product is something that has only three properties. That's you sort of, it's a trick, right? You want length, but you do it through inner product because there are so few requirements of the inner product. They are, I think this deserves to be written and then we'll call it a day. Look at me, perfectly on time, or not. Yeah. Are you guys fried? Are your brains fried? I want to write it down because notation is different. Instead of writing A dot B, which I personally reserve for geometric vectors, and I think that's kind of the convention, you write it as A comma B in parentheses, I'm no longer writing an arrow above it because it's no longer necessarily geometric vectors. And the properties that we need is AB equals BA, A plus B, I still say dot it, even though there's this notation that takes quite a bit to get used to because you're not used to parentheses meaning multiply, right? But that's what it means, it means multiply. There are four physics majors here. They may have seen this, except with triangular brackets. Equals, you'll get used to it. This is not a hard part to get used to. A dotted with C, I still say dotted, plus B dotted with C. And the final commutativity, distributivity, some people call it linearity. And the final property is that A, ooh, no, 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 no. <laughs> A dotted with itself is greater than zero, but only for A that are not zero themselves. Kind of a little thing. For A not equal to zero, zero vector. If your operation has these three properties, it's called an inner product. And it's as good as any other inner product. And then, once you have the inner product, I will define what length is. Length of a vector A, it's the square root of A dotted with A. Definition. By definition. Do you see the profound difference between this and that? When we were here, the length was a given. Angles were a given. We defined the inner product. And then we observed this property. In linear algebra, coming from this, everything's turned on its head. Inner product comes first, axiomatically. Anything that has these three properties is called an inner product. And this is now the definition of length. And just to blow your minds a little bit, I will write down what a common definition for the inner product on the space of polynomials looks like. Obviously, there are infinitely many definitions. But here is one. P dotted with Q. I can still say dotted. Equals. Now I have to produce a number. Right? I have to come up with an expression that produces a number. What typically produces a number out of functions? A sort of a vague question, admittedly. Like, in your experience, you've done it probably for five years straight without wondering why, are you, why am I doing this? 
300-year-old sub, 300 subject, where you, the input is a function, the output is a number, an integral. Are, who is allergic to that word? Cal allergic to calculus? No one. I'm inspired. How about integral? Let's go from 0 to 1 of p of x times q of x dx. But yes, is it the sort of thing that takes two vectors, polynomials, vectors, and returns a number? Yes. Is it commutative? Does it matter the order? Well, you have to think about it. Don't answer that quickly. But you'll see that it's commutative. And you'll see that it's distributive. And you'll see that it's positive definite. And so, yes, this is an inner product. And so the length of a polynomial is the square root length corresponding to this inner product. A length of a polynomial is the square root of the integral from 0 to 1 of the polynomial times itself. So now polynomials have lengths. So I know that, I'm wrapping up, that all of you are totally overwhelmed by this, but start letting it sink in. And this was a pretty good introduction to inner products. Yes. No, a zero function is a function that equals zero everywhere. That's the zero. And if you think about it, what's the zero vector in the space of all functions? It's the function that equals zero. Because it's the function such that if you add it to any other function, that one is unchanged. So it has to be zero everywhere. So if you think about the vector zero in the space of functions, it's the zero function. Not always positive. It's only when you dot it with itself. Of course it's not positive. So positivity is only when dotted with itself. 